even Cuadrovia moving to Bolivia. This is a photo of the Altiplano in Bolivia where they found many, many black artifacts from an unknown civilization dating is at least older than 4,000 years. You have also in, near Diawanaco, you have Pumabunku, where you have hundreds of stone plates perfect worked on with 10, 20, 30 tons. But the work is done very precise and very perfect. Nobody knows what was the reason and for what did they do it and especially how did they do it. This is the famous Sun Gate where Posnansky, a German uh, living in uh, uh, Bolivia at the beginning of the 20th century, he was doing research more than 30 years on Pumapunku and Tiawanaco and also on the Sun Gate and he found out that the Sun Gate uh, is ident with the Venus calendar. Look at this work. How could they do such a precise work on thousands of tons heavy stones with primitive uh, tiles? I don't think that's really possible. The next two pictures are satellite pictures from Salar de Uyuni. Salar de Uyuni is the world's largest salt lake, pure salt, in Bolivia in the height of 3,800 meters. Uh, you can see on this photo and also on the next photo that in the salt there are building, uh, uh, building forms. That means that in the salt, in former days, before there was water, before it was uh, changed to salt, that there were living people there. But now I have always three questions. How comes pure salt water up to 3,800 meters? How long does it take until salt water changes into pure salt? Because in 3,800 meters, the temperature is in the night very cold and on daytime it is not really hot. And third question is, how old must those buildings be? I think they are, we talking at least more than 10, 15, 20,000 years. And that shows us, and that was what, what I found out, and what is my opinion, that we had several times global catastrophes on our Earth. In this area, they found also 2.5, 2.6 meter skeletons from humans, but they were always bigger than 2.5, 2.6 meters. And you can see that the jaw is much stronger than our jaw. And the most strange thing is that those skeletons, those skulls, do not have any bone plate connection because we, the Homo sapiens sapiens, we have three bone plates and the fontanella. And when the baby is born, the fontanella is very soft and after growing up, the fontanella closes. These skulls do not have the three bone plates. And it's not a single skeleton, there were several of them. That means we have here definitely a different human like the Homo sapiens or Neanderthal or any known human. But unfortunately, those skeletons are deep in the jungle and only the photos I received through uh, Bolivian friends and uh, we have the approval and the agreement with the military when we, we are flying there, they will bring us to the skeletons and then I have the chance to bring at least one bone with me and we, we can try to do an age dating and a DNA dating. These masks were found in the area of the skeletons and when I presented these masks in Vienna 2001, I was wondering because I thought how they can make so wonderful, beautiful masks, but you cannot look through both eyes. You have to look either through the right one or the left one, because at that time I didn't know that those people in this area 
were over 2.5 meters. And of course, if you are 2.5 meter, your skull is also wider and your eye view would fit perfect those masks. That's another mask. And another one, very strange symbols on it. And always a snake. On this figurine, you have on top and on the reverse side, you have the snake. And that's another, that's one of the animals we find always, always on very old, unknown artifacts. So that means that the snake must have been a very big importance in the past. In our days, as I heard, uh, in Australia you have a lot of very poison snakes. Uh, this is a stone pan flute. And you can see here where it is damaged that inside the stone is brown, but only the surface is very black like lacquer. And we do not know how they could do is, this. And the holes are very precise done. And we asked a Bolivian pan flute player in Vienna to make us some sound samples. And I asked also two professors to join us uh, to check the kind of sound. And it took him uh, nearly half an hour until he got the first sounds out of it. And later on, we found out that every two holes are perfectly connected on the bottom. And when he brought out the sounds, and we did a check on it. Uh, this sound does not uh, connect any known uh, sound, uh, I don't know how you call it, do, re, mi, fa, si, fa, Yeah, it does not fit any, one tone was high, deep, very deep, middle, very high, but we found out that these tones uh, have a connection with the brain waves. So I think they might have been used either for meditation or for healing. This is like a boat with three holes. And this is very small. And when he tried with the same force, power, to get out sounds of this small flute, it didn't work. And when he used it very soft, we got the same sound like the dolphin sound. Now we are going to Colombia. This is the so-called genetical or embryological disc. I, ha I have here the perfect replica of the original and I leave it later on here on, on, on the stage in the break so you can check it by yourself. This material, we did material check in Vienna. It is Lydite. Lydite is a very hard stone. Uh, it is nearly the same hardness like granite, but it is formed like leaves in the structure. So it would not be able for us in our days to do this and the following artifacts from the same material because it's just impossible. We, we did the material check in Vienna and also the most famous or the most uh, perfect uh, expert did a check on the plate and on the other material and he told me afterwards, I cannot tell you how they did it, when they did it and how old it is, but one thing I can tell you definitely from the same material we are not able in our days to do the same artifacts. But the strange thing on this genetical disc is that you have things on it which we only are able to see with microscope. For example, here you have the human egg with spermia inside and without spermia. You have here the spermias. You have on the reverse side, uh, here you can see the comparison of a microscope photo inside a lady of the human eggs. And on the reverse side, you have different kind of fetus, but you have here male, female, and on the other side, male, female, and child. And 
Professor uh, Gutierrez, the Colombian owner of this collection, he thinks that this, this disc shows uh, the transformation from frog to human, which I do not really agree. But it is very strange that how were they able to do this uh, piece and the other following pieces from this material, where we would not be able to do it in our days, and why did they show the face so big with r uh, round eyes? Why didn't they show how they really looked? Or the other question is, did they really look like they presented themselves here? This we cannot approve. This is a knife, and in the, it's the same material, Ludite, and you have here the mother's head and the baby, and the bone line is around the neck of the baby, and here you have an arrow going down. That means it shows for what to use. If the, the line is struggling, strangling the baby, they should use this knife to cut the line. This we called birth help a spoon. It is this size, and you have here the mother's head, uh, the, the, the vagina and the baby's head coming out. And on the reverse side, you only can put precisely this finger inside, and then you ho can hold it only with your two fingers. And in Vienna, some uh, doctors were checking this piece, and they told me it would be even safer than our instruments when the baby doesn't come out to help it, because with this instrument, it would not be able to damage the baby's head because you cannot use power, because you only can use the three finger. So that means you really could help to get the baby out, but you could not damage the baby's head. And this is the same material. That means the, the Ludite, the structure is like leaves. So it would not be possible today to make this form in the same material. So that's why he guaranteed that Ludite, the same pieces, and this piece is about this size, it would not be able for us to make it. Also these pieces. And if you see here, each piece is done in perfect style. And here you can see how they were holding those pieces. This you know from Easter Island, but this is a very small one found in the Colombian jungle. Looks like the Maui on the Easter Island. Now we are jumping to uh, Guinea Conakry, Western Africa. Uh, Professor Pitoni, an Italian geologist, gave me those photos, this one and the next one, and you can see here a lady's head, the breast until here. It is granite, very hard. It is in the mountain and it is definitely not natural made, because you can see here the face. And the size from here to here is 150 meters. And the face is definitely not black African. Uh, some uh, skull experts did a measurement and everything, and they said it's either Asian or South American. <laughs> 